Okay, welcome here with the challenge of Project Zata, making them smarter. Great uh, that you are willing to take on this challenge of improving the roads and waterways of Rijkswaterstaat um, with sensor data. And um, this is Frank and I'm Laura. We are your hosts for this challenge uh, today. And uh, first of all, um, we are very curious if you already have experience with sensor data. Who has? Can, I can you raise your hand? Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot of experience. Okay, and um, we also curious if you already uh, team up or are you still looking for teammates. Who's looking for teammates still? Okay, good, good to know, because then we can create a team up corner uh, on at 11 o'clock, so you can team up. Um, and forming a good team is very important, and we will show you a video. Um, we'll show you why it's important. And after that, of course, we will uh, introduce you to the people behind this challenge and um, they will tell you about um, the challenge and the roadmap. And, well, just waiting for the video to start. Okay, the video seems to be uh, disappeared. Maybe on the second screen or something? Yeah. Okay, we're making progress. Thank you for your time. It's also a long time ago, group. so that might be the Today reason we're going why. To show you an idea <laughs> and ask for your Stone opinion. Age. <laughs> this is called fire. Now to our focus group. Today we're going to show you an idea oh, you and ask for your opinion. This is called a wheel. Now, according to its developers, it'll change the way we work and live. Okay. Why? Because it rolls. It can also be added to wagons to make moving a heavy load easier. Your opinions. It, if it rolls, that means it could roll away and get lost, right? Or it could roll over your foot. Begins to make moving a heavy load easier. Your opinions. Opinion. This well, technique is, is always called a, a challenge, wheel. right? Now, so according um, to its developer. Okay. Thank you for your time and welcome to our focus group. Today, we're going to show you an idea and ask for your opinion. This is called a wheel. Now, according to its developers, it'll change the way we work and live. Why? Because it rolls. It can also be added to wagons to make moving a heavy load easier. Your opinions. It, if it 
rolls. That means it could roll away and get lost, right? Or it could roll over your foot. It's the round shape that disturbs me. It's, it's very feminine. I can't imagine any caveman wanting to be seen with, with that. No, I wouldn't. Duh. And this added to wagons thing, it sounds very complicated. Is there an easier version? Do you know what? Do... Do you have it in, um... square? No square. There was a, a square one. Yeah. It didn't roll. <laughs> then maybe I would think about buying one. <laughs> nice try. The wheel. <laughs> So um, that's why your team members are very important and also that you embrace their ideas and not uh, kill any ideas. So um, um, for now, I won't, yes, you can stay, you can stay on stage because um, this is Arnold Koning, he's uh, innovation manager of Rijkswaterstaat and uh, he also um, together with two, uh, two other people behind this challenge and he will tell you uh, more about it. I will. Hi everyone. So I'm Arnold, uh, this is Rutger. And that's André, André. Uh, after this short presentation, I'll keep it short, you can register at André for the challenge. You get a free t-shirt, a clean t-shirt, and we will meet, we'll introduce you to our experts and we'll give you a workshop on LoRa, Wi-Fi, sensors, and all that type of stuff. Um, let me just explain you a little bit about our challenge. Make them smarter. Well, actually, it has a very bold goal. We're asking you to help us improve the Netherlands. How? By making our infrastructure smarter. Because vehicles, cars, boats, and even you with smartphones, we're getting smarter. What? Well, we're not getting smarter, but devices are getting smarter. Well, what about our infrastructure? And what if we can place some sensors on these uh, uh, um, roads, waterways, bridges, etc.? and make them smarter and connect with the cars and connect with the boats, what will that do for us? How will it, how will it improve mobility or safety? Uh, how, we can, how can we predict better what happens on the roads and uh, avoid traffic jams, for instance? So what do we do? We place some sensors here around Utrecht and you can use the real live data from those sensors and you can use the data from other objects we have in Holland. And after this, we'll have an, uh, uh, a speech from one of our colleagues who actually worked with uh, data around uh, uh, a large project in Holland. Uh, and she's here to inspire you about that project. But it's only one project, so we need more projects. Uh, and we, we hope you will help us with that. All right, what's in it for you? We hope you get inspired about infrastructure, as are we. And you will be able to act on it. Uh, another thing is you'll have unlimited access to our field experts. Uh, they are uh, all around you, and um, most of the crew is wearing this shirt. It's Lef. It means guts and act. Um, and they can tell you who are the experts, and they'll introduce you to them. You can learn all about sensors. So uh, you'll have a workshop where we'll teach you more about sensors, but you'll probably teach us some of uh, your knowledge too. So we're ready to share. And what do we expect from you? We expect you to create a concept. And well, preferably uh, a proof of concept. But if you present us our, your idea uh, in 48 hours, that would be, would be really nice. So you have access to our data, access to our experts, come up with a concept, present us your concept at the end of the 48 hours, uh, we'll judge and jury, and uh, of course we have some neat prizes. 
So after this presentation, um, you can register at Andre, or you can walk to our booth uh, here on campus site. So now we're in the introduction kickoff. Uh, after this, we have the workshop, I mentioned already, uh, Internet of Things by KPN. And after that, you can meet our experts. So you have one hour to register, team up, and after that, we have two workshops for you. Now I'd, li I'd like to uh, uh, give the microphone to Rutger. He'll tell you all about our data. Hi, I'm uh, Rutger Kranz. Uh, I also work at Rijkswaterstaat and especially interested in everything that's with data and measuring and ICT. Um, uh, and I'm uh, doing an innovation program on that. Uh, and I'd like to tell you about the data that we have here for you. Um, um, let me see. Oh, right there. Come up. The first thing uh, that, that we already discussed is the long-range network. It's, uh, the long-range network is uh, an international um, um, uh, uh, group of uh, companies uh, working to uh, get this uh, possible. And the, the idea of the long-range network is that everywhere that you have a cell phone, that you can also uh, use the Internet of Things. Uh, but it's a, a different frequency, and uh, especially you have devices that have a very low bit rate, uh, so that you, if you have a battery at uh, distant places, it can work for five to ten years. Uh, this makes it possible to have the Internet of Things on uh, remote bridges and viaducts uh, where there's no current. Uh, so it's very important for us, but also for other, thing, other uses of Internet of Things. And uh, KPN, the p uh, they are sitting there in the back. They uh, are uh, rolling this out in, in the Netherlands. Um, it's already operational here in Utrecht. And uh, uh, this is the workshop uh, where they will tell you uh, and, and get you acquainted with these devices. Um, there are other initiatives too that are relevant here, like uh, the Things Network. And they uh, installed a LoRa one here uh, at this uh, site. And they also distribute uh, Arduinos, which would be very nice for you to have, I think, if you're interested. Um, then. Uh, we have several sensors uh, at the Galenkopper Bridge, which is uh, in Utrecht uh, on the highway. Um, and we have all, uh, some sensors here present too at, the, uh, at, at, the, at this site. Um, and there uh, you can uh, try to use them and, and see what they mean for your challenge. Um, you can measure things like temperature, air humidity, vibrations, uh, see if a door is open or closed, light reflectivity, which is important for tunnels, all that kind of thing. Um, then about the data, um, we have uh, data from uh, the uh, Van Brienenoord Bridge. Uh, that's a large bridge uh, uh, in Rotterdam. Uh, we have the Schalenkopper Bridge, uh, LoRa data. We have energy consumption data of a lock, the Prins Bernard locks. And then we have construction data of all these, uh, uh, these specific assets of the Rijkswaterstaat. Uh, furthermore, we have open data of Rijkswaterstaat and the traffic data, which are also open data. And we have all this uh, uh, accessible, uh, uh, we have a USB stick where you get all the access uh, for this and uh, for the especially large sets, we have uh, other means too. Um, so that is what I wanted to tell you about the data. And I think then I'll give the hand uh, to you back to uh, about the challenge. Yeah, so that was a lot of data. So I'm asking you now, do you have any questions? Yeah. Do you have to be uh, right here for 48 hours straight? No. Okay. No. Actually, uh, you can go wherever you want. <laughs> okay. But we'll be around, so you can come to our booth. and. Well, you know this where we are, so uh, you can always come to us. Okay. And you can always email us or phone us or whatever. And uh, we can ask technical questions later, right? Exactly. Okay, yeah. Any other questions? Uh, I want to know, can you give an example of probably application of this uh, idea? So what, what idea should we come up or something like that? 
Yeah, we, we have a short uh, presentation a little bit. That will give you an idea. And uh, maybe afterwards we can mention uh, some more ideas. Um, and of course you can uh, talk to our experts and they have a lot of ideas. So uh, it will boost your cre creativity. Any other questions right about now? No? Okay. Well, tomorrow, day two, is actually very simple. Oh. The other microphone, yeah. <laughs> Um, you just work out your ideas, and if you have any questions, you come to us, and we will help you. Um, yeah, we're at booth 27. You'll notice this car, so you can't miss us, and uh, we'll be there, uh, well, the whole day. And after hours, like 10 o'clock, then you can just email us or see if we're around and talk to us. Saturday. Well, you can send in your concept uh, via Gmail. Uh, actually, you have to register at Andre. He'll give you all the data. Uh, the final three, because Saturday morning, we will review all your pitches. Um, final three will pitch on stage for a jury, and they will win a little bit skit, uh, which we'll hear all about in our KPN workshop. Um, and you will get 500 euros for the winner. So that's, uh, that's our th those are the prizes. And this is what we're looking for. Uh, concepts that connect our infrastructure with vehicles that improve mobility, save expenses, make it, uh, well, uh, of course, uh, uh, predictable for users how to use our infrastructure and improve sustainability. So any idea will work as long as it has sensors, data, and it connects our infrastructure with other vehicles. Now. Uh, this, uh, in short, uh, it's very easy. You just grab the USB from, uh, from Andre, build your concept, put it on the USB, drop uh, the concept, uh, the USB stick, uh, Saturday by 9, or email, um, and pitch at 12 o'clock. That's it. So now, uh, yes, a question. Aren't there already a lot of sensors on the roads? Like oh, for for, aren't there already aren't there already a lot of sensors in the roads? Yeah, I think so. uh, Rutger can talk. Yeah, sure. There are twenty five thousand sensors uh, uh, for it for traffic management. Uh, this bridge data uh, is is uh, has a lot of construction uh, day, um, uh, sensors. So there is a lot already, uh, but we uh, are not really uh, that far in using it. Uh, so it's it's if, uh, uh, it used to be very difficult to place all these sensors, and it's, uh, uh, it's something of the last years that we really uh, introduced that in our uh, working. Okay. So now for our next uh, speaker. That's Nancy. Sorry? Yeah? Nancy, I will have to start up your presentation. And we had some problems with technicalities here, so <laughs> let me check how this works. Maybe you can give uh, a short introduction on yourself, yeah? yeah. I will just start and um, we'll, get, we'll get to the pictures later. Um, well, I'm the typical manager of Rijkswaterstaat. Well, actually, I'm, I don't think I am. And here's another one, she's also not. Because we're young, we're women, and Rijkswaterstaat has a tradition of being 200 years old. Uh, and it used to be made by uh, uh, Napoleon, and that means that we're rather hierarchic. We just do things the Rijkswaterstaat way, and there was a long time that we considered that we were the only ones to be able to do it. Um, yeah, thank you. But now we're uh, up for a challenge. We need, some th we need a lot of old, and we also want something new. Uh, so I'm standing here at this campus party, and I think like three or four years ago, I hadn't got a clue what sensors were or what they could do. So short introduction uh, to me. Um, I used to be an ICT consultant, so that must mean something to all of you, being a lot of uh, technicians. But my other part was uh, uh, being a change manager. 
uh, and connecting those two uh, meant that I really had to do a lot of work. And you, you all gained a lot of energy and a lot of uh, um, uh, 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 intelligence from your studies, so you know a lot, but you have to learn more. And actually, you have to keep on learning. Because from being a change manager, I worked in uh, human resource management, from there into finance, and I am into the real hardcore stuff. And to Rijkswaterstaters, that's really the, the one and only thing we do. Um, and the thing is that you, keep on, you have to adapt and keep on adapting to the world around you. Um, so this is basically the thing that I'm worried about. I have to keep traffic, whether it's ships or uh, uh, vehicles, moving on our water and highways. And in order to do that, we have to maintain uh, our assets. Because if they don't work, we got traffic jams. Well, you get traffic jams by accidents, of course, uh, but we cannot prevent that. But what we can prevent is uh, stopping the traffic because the bridge doesn't work, stopping the traffic because the locks don't work, uh, uh, leaving the ship in the locks because it doesn't work. So basically that's uh, uh, my job. And I am doing that now for three years. And the first things is, be well, Rijkswaterstaat has been building all these things uh, for over 200 year years. And we, I think we did a pretty good job because you can travel here, you have good roads, they're pretty safe. Um, so we really made an effort doing that. And gradually we turned this man-made operation in and we put more technology in it. And now it's not, it's remotely uh, 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 managed. The first day I got there, my boss told me, I got a really nice thing for you. you we're going to have to renovate the Valzer Tunnel. You see a picture here. Anyone here from the north of Holland? Anyone knows where it is? No. Well, the good thing is half of Holland also doesn't know. And that means that you can also try things there. And I'm, I'm, uh, as I was not a really technician, I had to find out how, how, what can I do? Because there's lots of people around and a really a project management team and they can fix the inside of the tunnel. Because by now, I'm sure that technology can fix everything. Might be hard, might be hard work, might be that we don't have the right people in the right place, but we can fix it. So, and that's not what I'm good at. So I started telling in the surroundings uh, of, uh, of this tunnel, we're going to close this tunnel for nine months. And I never saw people so angry with me. Because just imagine, there's two tunnels, you can see them over there, and you skip half the capacity. So what will happen to traffic jams? You double it, at least. Uh, so the people around there were really not very happy. Um, but not telling them was not an option, because they would found out if we just closed up the tunnel. So we started talking to the environment and to see whether they could help us because we had to get more traffic off the road. And you all know what you really hate is change, but you hate it even more if government tells you that you have to do it. You have to change your behavior because we, the government, are shutting down a tunnel. Um, so I was driving back from my work uh, uh, knowing we always do things for over 200 years the Rijkswaterstaat way. That means procedures, and we do it long, and we do it thorough, and we do it everywhere the same way. But what do we do if we face some new problems? So I really had to come up with something new. So when I went home, and my husband went, uh, works for Microsoft, and I just pass it on my way, um, they were having a drink. They were having a drink with young professionals from the ING Bank and young Microsoft. And they were solving the bank's most specific problems they have because banks have a lot of legacy, legacy systems, and how do you communicate quickly with it? How do you do internet banking if you have to go back to 1970 if someone can get a mortgage or not? And what really inspired me is that uh, uh, all these young people, uh, being young people from ING and young people from Microsoft, they started to uh, think of new ways of how to fix these problems. And then my human resource management heart started pumping like, oh, I can do this, I can do this. I wanna do uh, something like that. I want to inspire people and I want to have them grow. Um, so what we did is we just managed a group of uh, uh, young Rijkswaterstaters, well young is actually not that young because young is 35. 
Really. So you're in, in our context, you're babies. You just begun to walk. Um, but in our, well, having a 20, uh, 200 year old organization means that you have purple people working there for long. Um, so we gathered a group of young professionals from Microsoft and young people from Rijkswaterstaat, and I said, I have this tunnel. I'm going to shut it down. There's no option of not doing it. Everyone started explaining, no, we can keep the tunnel. But it was just not working anymore, not properly. Um, so we came up, and what do all these youngsters do? They made apps, more apps, more apps, more apps. But the apps do work. And there was one group that came up um, with the idea, what if we just gather data and just see if we can analyze, fix things, connect things, find new solutions? And because that was the only thing that we didn't have before, I said, okay, let's go for that. Because I'm always trying and looking for new solutions. And apps we already have, and we have a lot of them. And actually, Rijkswaterstaat cannot build them. We've got service providers. Uh, so what we did is we were gathering data, but how do you get to data? What kind of data do we have? Because someone was asking, aren't there already a lot of sensors in the road? And there are, but they're ju just used for a different means. Uh, they used to measure uh, traffic that goes over them, but actually they're pretty stupid sensors. Uh, and it's really expensive to put them in the road, and if you put them in the road, you destroy the road, which is, if my job is maintaining roads, I don't really like it. Uh, but we need them because we need them for other purposes. What else do we have? We have the traffic of uh, the, uh, uh, we have um, uh, uh, and anything that happens with the weather and the economy, we have data from that and we gathered it from that. We have data from the tunnels, we had cameras, we had uh, cars, we have information about the, uh, the incidents on the road and we have traffic management control centers. Uh, and all of that data we we gathered together. And as you know, what also is needed is the oracles or the gurus, the people that you will not allow to go on holiday. Because if they're gone, you just don't have any option. They don't put things in systems. They are the system. They know in which weather conditions there's traffic jams. They know why. They know at what time, and they know at what time it stops. And they also know the solutions. So with all this data we were gathering, we also needed the people that really understood what's going on on the road without putting it in the system. And what we started there is what you will do next in the workshop and tomorrow and after, is we started uh, a creative thinking process. So you first have to just shout and scream ideas, not saying, no, it doesn't work. Don't say, like you said before, kill the idea. No, we tried it before. No, it's not going to work. No, I don't like this. No, it will never work. No, it's too hard. Just put a lot of ideas. And I asked some people to be in the same meeting as me, and they were really upset. But the only good thing about 200 years Rijkswaterstaat is, if your boss tells you you have to be somewhere, you just go. And they don't care if, you, if they know why they're there or not, but because I told them, and I'm one of the bosses, they come. Uh, and then the idea was to uh, uh, give them inspiration. So they started uh, writing, and this is only a little piece of the information we were gathering that day. They were uh, 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 kept on shouting ideas of what can we do and what more data can we have, and can we have the, uh, the data from the NS, from the, from the train station, or can we have them from Skip Hall, can we have them from the Central Plan Bureau? Uh, and then what you have to do next is what you also will have to go through is, uh, because this is what we did before, you have to find the best idea, one which you really put all your effort in. Uh, and you have to converge it to the idea that you will come to life with. And we did. We found this data set and we thought, well, let's see what we can do with that. And with this data set, which looked really good, I had a really hard time of, well, how does this work? Because I had this idea, and then the whole world think, well, yeah, yeah, that's your idea. That's your problem, and your idea is your Velsig tunnel. I don't know where it is, just as you don't know where it is. And I met this guy, and he was telling, you, uh, he was telling me, well, but, but 
Nancy, you know how it works. If you're in this big organization, people want to know where they are and people want to know where they go. They want to make it a project, always. Rijkswaterstaat, we just do things in projects. Uh, and if you don't know exactly where you are, and you, it's like making a trip uh, or, a, or a dropping. You don't know where you are, but you know at what time the drinks are over. And you all must have known this from when you were young. They put you on a dropping. They just drop you somewhere and you have to go somewhere. Um, and with that, that's also more or less predictive. And you see it by the uitroeptekens, uh, uh, exclamation marks. In the back, you know where you're going. Um, and the last week, I had a trip to uh, 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 Africa. And I know where I stand. And I know what my job is. And I didn't know what I want to find out. But I was on a trip. And you only had to adapt to people around you to make the trip worthwhile. And when you don't know what you want to do, and you don't know where you want to be, and that's what I really had with my data set, you're on an adventure. And if you're in this big organization where everything goes by procedures, they don't like adventures because it's dangerous, it's unpredictable, you don't know how much money you're going to spend, and you don't know what will happen when, uh, when it's done. So I kept on with these enthusiastic people I got because after the first meeting when they were really mad at me, they really liked it. And they kept on thinking and they came up with this. Anyone know what it is? It's an algorithm. And the funny thing is, this was the first predictor of the traffic we had in the other tunnel for next week. Because at Rijkswaterstaat, we know what traffic will be th this afternoon, depending on the weather, depending on uh, who came uh, in this morning, depending on uh, incidents we expect or not, and depending on the, the roadworks we have. What we also know, and that's really cool, we know what the traffic will be in 40 years because that's how we make the investments. But everything in between is this big question mark. We don't know what the weather will be next week. We don't know. Uh, from the models we make, we cannot see if it's winter or summer. But everyone here knows, in summer, when holidays, less traffic. In winter, when snow, terrible traffic. But in our models, it's not. It's the same every day. And what these guys came up with was, was this prediction of next week's traffic. And with the thing that you know what traffic will be there, like uh, next week, you can ask people, go late, go early, take the tram, take the bus, uh, don't go, uh, uh, go and uh, work, work from home. And with this, with this uh, sim simple, more or less simple algorithm, we could just have more prediction and we can ask the environment to help us. So what I, thinking back of what, what happened was, we put something in motion. Just me with the idea that like, there's more than just traffic and more than just things in the road that mean nothing to us, but just the hunch that you need more things and new things uh, and, and, and put it to make new possibilities. You cannot just do that from the old things we do. And the challenge is, how do you keep it moving? And it's not just the minds, it's the technology, which are part of you, but it's also the people and the processes. So coming back, I had this algorithm, and then IT started to wake up. Because then they thought, oh, now we can, if we see that this is possible, then we can find funding, we can find people, we can make it a project, and we can put it in a process. And that's what I want to ask you to do, is willing to learn, 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 and go on. Just don't stop if someone tells you it's a stupid idea. Find someone, promote it, and show that it can work. And for me, the trail was like that. Because I've gone on, I could have gone on the other, uh, on, on a trail by myself. Would have seen lots more. But I, helped, I let myself guide by uh, two guys from South Africa, and seven women, which under, uh, I slept under the blue sky. You're sleeping in tents here, so more or less the same. But what I want to say is, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. And what, will, what can happen here is that 
you actually might be participating in a life-changing event. And that's what I really hope for, because maybe it's making the traffic lights more smart. Maybe it's we're, we're building a big new uh, lock. Maybe we can make that smart, uh, and we can add it to the ships. Uh, so that's what uh, one of the things that uh, Arnold was saying before. You can make a change. You can make the difference. But you have to keep on working through it and on it. And don't do it alone. Because it's just technology and one person. You don't make the change. Questions? Thank you. A lot of inspiration in your story. Um, any questions for Nancy? Should you raise your hand? No questions? None? Okay. okay. What, I, what I want to tell you is if you want to have more information about the project specifically and what we're doing there, over here is uh, uh, Anna and Victor, and they're participating in the project. So you, they can also help you uh, finding out what struggles they engage and how you can go on with data. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, you ended with uh, together, it's important, right? So your team is very important. So uh, we'd like to continue for, uh, with team up and uh, invite the teams who already form a team on stage and you can collect your t-shirt and then you can go to Android to collect your uh, USB stick. Um, and uh, for the um, who's, who's looking for a teammate can also come over here and then we can uh, you can talk together and form a team. And then we have uh, Frank, he's an Aikido master. I didn't tell you yet, but he's an Aikido master. And he will show you some uh, uh, exercises to get really focused. Because embracing ideas is one thing, but to um, be, have a, a good focus on your goal is very important. So that's what we do next. So may I invite you, if you, you can uh, go to come to Arnold, yes? Yeah, if you're already in team to collect your t-shirt. And if you're not, uh, if you're looking for teammates, please come to me and to Frank here and we will see if we can um, introduce you to each other and um, team up.